whether you are a seasoned web developer a data scientist a machine learning engineer or a devops engineer i have something truly special for you today if you have been searching for a cutting edge solution to streamline your development process increase your productivity while writing code elevate code quality and supercharge collaboration capabilities then look no further than the intersection of github code spaces and github copilot GitHub Code Spaces is a revolutionary cloud-based development environment that empowers you to code in any programming language all without the need to install a single thing on your machine. So say goodbye to cumbersome setups and say hello to the seamless coding experience. Well, that's not all, right? I mentioned about GitHub Copilot. Well, GitHub Copilot is your AI-powered pair programming assistant. With Copilot by your side, you can write code faster and more accurately than ever before. So this is what I'll explain today. So without wasting any further time, let's kick start the video. This will be a step by step video, so I'll go really slowly so that you can kind of start using GitHub Code Spaces along with GitHub Copilot. So let's start. I've already clicked on create a new repository and now I'll enter a repository name. So let me type in say temp1. So it says temp1 is available, I'll go forward. I want this to be a public repository, I'll kind of delete it once the video is ready. But yeah, I'll keep going forward and I'll click on create repository. Now in normal circumstances, what you would have done is you would have created the entire piece of code locally on your machine and then pushed it to GitHub. But now I'll show you something different and interesting. So I'll click on create a code space. I'll go forward and I'll again click create new code space. So I'll click this. So it says setting up your code space. So it's basically setting up a remote connection and it's connecting to code space. So this is what we have. It's a VS code editor that's given to us. All of this is using GitHub servers. So there's very little dependency in terms of what you require internally at this point of time. So the code space is now ready. So this is what you can see here as well. I'll quickly type Python here. So I have Python 3.10.8. So this is the version that's given to me. I'll quickly press exit. So I have been allocated a space on GitHub server wherein I can write code and I have access to VS code so I can write code and kind of run it here and push every piece of code to GitHub directly. So this is what I have. What I'll do next is I'll create a simple file here. Let me zoom into this region. So just a sec. Now everything looks ordered. So I'll go here and I'll create a new file. I'll call it say temp.py just to check if python is working correctly or not I'll say print hello world my name is Bhavesh I'll save this file and now I'll type in python temp.py so the entire process is working fine. So I'm kind of happy that everything is in order. The one piece that I've also mentioned right now to you is how you can use GitHub Copilot. So for GitHub Copilot, I have to go to the extension section, which is this particular tab. I will search for GitHub Copilot. So I'll type in GitHub Copilot. I'll click install. So the installation is done. I'll go back to the explorer section. Now, once everything is ready, I'll click on new file again. I'll say temp1.py. In temp1.py, I'll try to create some functions entirely using GitHub Copilot. Let's start with an example of finding out common elements between two lists. So I'll create a function intersection of lists list 1 and list 2 so technically I wanted to give in some comments for input and output but before that I think 
GitHub Copilot has already given me the solution. So what I wanted to do was I have, so for example, if I have two lists, say one, two, three, four, and again, it's giving me the exact autocomplete answers that I'm thinking as well. So this is truly amazing. So, so if my first list is one, two, three, and the second list is two, three, four, it will give me an intersection value between them. So if I print this out, and if I save this, and if I run python temp1.py, it says 2 and 3. So whatever was my thought initially is what I've been able to generate here without any hassle, right? So as soon as I gave the right function name for what I wanted to create, GitHub Copilot was smart enough to give me a recommendation that this is something that I feel would be the code that you're looking for. So this is truly amazing, right? I won't stop here. I'll keep moving forward. Now, say for example, if I have names of people in a list, I want to capture the initials of that person. So for example, if you have names like Sachin, I want the initial letter. If the name includes name and surname, then I want the first letter of the name and surname. So if I have a function that goes like this, def extract initials from list here if i pass in say input list this function takes a list of names and returns a list of initials so it's giving me a recommendation if i define the input so if i define so it's giving me some recommendation, right? So input list. So I'll say for example, input list is equal to, uh, so it's given me a recommendation. I can choose what to use and what not to use. So I'll say Sachin, Sachin Tendulkar. And I'll type in the full name of Sachin as well. Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar. For this, I want the output list to be equal to S S R and S R T. So this is what I want. So as soon as I typed return, it's given me a recommendation. I'll go forward and I'll click tab. So once I've pressed tab, this piece of code has been created. Now what I'll do is I'll try to see if this is the actual uh, piece of code that I really want or not. I'll say print and I'm getting a recommendation automatically. So I'll say select this particular piece, but now I want to enter my name. So I'll say Bhavesh Bhatt. I'll save this and I'll run this piece of code. So I'll say python temp1.py. It says there's something wrong here. So I think we've goofed up in terms of the brackets. So now I'll save it again and hopefully this should work. So yes, it says b b b. So it works perfectly fine, right? Uh, so whatever I had in mind, I was just pressing tab based on the recommendation that GitHub Copilot was giving me. And once I was able to successfully validate based on the input output, what code should be, then uh, I was kind of convinced that this particular piece of code is correct in nature. So uh, I'm truly mesmerized with what all you can do using GitHub Copilot. And just to reiterate, we're not using our local machine, we're using GitHub's server based configuration. Again, you can pre-configure it based on your needs, but I'm using the default version right now of GitHub code spaces. So uh, I'm truly mesmerized with the entire combination of how you can get things up and running using very limited hardware. You can kind of create production level softwares directly on GitHub itself. Let's try some other example as well, say temp3.py. Now I want to generate odd numbers between one to 100. So for example, if I say def, generate odd numbers between range 
so i'll say start and end and yeah, i mean it's given me everything right i didn't even have to complete the entire piece it was smart enough to give me a recommendation whether it's correct or not not always will it be correct but think of it as an assistant that will help you guide through that complex situations whenever you feel that there is a need for some amount of assistance github copilot will be there to guide you so if i say print and then generate odd numbers between say 100 to 200 or 100 to say 120 itself and now if i say python temp 3.py it says generator object between this so there's some change If I return I, now will it work? Let's check. It says 101 because then it kind of starts. What you can do is generate odd numbers between start and end. So it's giving me the first odd number, but it's returning at that point itself. So let me clear this out. And now it will give me a list. So the first recommendation, I was not happy. I cleared all of that out. And now it's able to understand that, hey, I want odd numbers between a range. So I quickly press space. And now hopefully it should give me what I require. So these are the list of odd numbers. So if I, so if I maximize this, this is the list of odd numbers that are there between 100 to 120. And yeah, I mean, what else can you ask for? It's able to quickly understand that there's something wrong that I've done in the previous recommendation. I cleared everything. So rather than me having to create an empty list and append it once I find an odd number, it was smart enough to understand that it's gone wrong. And now it's given me a recommendation. So this is truly, truly mesmerizing in terms of what it can do. Well, this is how amazing GitHub Copilot is. So what I'll do next is there are three files that I've created, right? So I want to push them directly to GitHub. So this is my kind of local environment that is running on GitHub servers. So this is how amazing GitHub code spaces is. Now here I have made changes to three files, temp, temp1 and temp3. So I'll type in a message here, first commit and I'll put in some exclamation marks as well and I'll press on commit. There are no staged changes to commit. Would you like to stage all your changes and commit them directly? I'll say yes. And all of the changes have been committed. So I'll press OK. So what we've done so far is we've done version control locally on the machine that's running on GitHub servers. For me to push this particular code to my GitHub repository, all I'll have to do is I'll have to go and press these three dots and I'll have to press on push. So I'll say push. And I'm pretty sure all these three files should appear in my repository. Let's go forward and check my repository now. So now when I come to my repository, I can see the readme file along with all the three temp files that I've created. That is temp.py, temp1.py and temp3.py. So if I click any of them, uh, the code is here as I would have expected. So this is a small introductory video that I wanted to create and I wanted to show you the power of GitHub Copilot along with GitHub Code Spaces and how all of this can kind of culminate you to become a better programmer by using the AI assistant tool along with using GitHub servers so that you don't have to worry about the infrastructure at your local machine's end, right? So all you have to worry about creating end-to-end -end applications without worrying about either the infrastructure or the code quality wherein GitHub has created a solution that helps you kind of leverage all of them together. So this is all that I had in today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do enjoy such videos that I create on data science, machine learning, GitHub and the other applications of how you can become a better programmer, feel free to subscribe to my channel and also press the like button so that this video goes out to as many learners as possible. Thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you.